Greetings, internet viewers, and welcome to the video. Given that it's the start of a new Oktoberfest season, I figured that we would start things off the way we have for the last few, by doing a spooky media review. So submitted for the approval of you, the viewing audience, I present Witch's Night Out, a review by Yours Ghouli. This special was originally released on October 27th of 1978, and believe it or not, this is actually a pseudo-sequel of sorts, as the first outing that featured these characters was a Christmas special titled The Gift of Winter, and this special right here was originally released in 1974. Now regarding this special... This animated short starts off with a groovy little song number that has caused some, myself included, to falsely remember the title of this film as Witch Magic Halloween. After that, the special kicks into gear, and we find ourselves in a small unnamed town on the day of All Hallows' Eve, with our main characters, two children with the odd names of Small and Tender, chattering away about how excited they are with their costumes, just as they bump into a rather odd couple by the names of Malicious and Rotten. Hey folks, just jumping in here to let you all know that basically all of the characters have weird names like this, and so you have been warned. Okay, now let's get back to the cartoon. Anyway, Malicious and Rotten are complaining about Halloween and saying how much they hate it, just as another odd couple, by the names of Goodly and Nicely, comes up and the group gets into an odd conversation where Goodly starts proclaiming about how they should make Halloween. What we need is something to make Halloween meaningful to adults as people. Thankfully, Nicely cuts him off and suggests that they have a party. Goodly latches on to this idea, and he starts assigning jobs to their little group. Nicely is tasked with inviting people to the event. Malicious is tasked with making the food. He declares that he will go to the abandoned house on the edge of town to scope it out for the venue, and declares that Rotten will accompany him. The group disperses, with Small and Tender having wandered off a while ago and Goodly along with Rotten head for the old haunted mansion. Next we cut to the house in question, where we are introduced to the titular character of the witch. She's seen moping around and talking glumly to her cat about how she feels unwanted and depressed, and about how no one's called upon her services this year. While she's talking, she digs out her magic wand and uses it to transform the cat into a bat to cheer herself up. This works for a moment, but then she quickly goes back into moping again, saying, Halloween, I'm unemployed. Please, somebody call. Soon after this, Goodly and Rotten arrive and quickly scope out the place, all the while not stepping more than a couple of feet beyond the threshold of the front door, with Goodly gesturing to where things should go, with Rotten just agreeing with everything he says, and the two leaving rather quickly the door closing itself behind them. As it turns out, the witch overhears their plans and starts getting excited to be hosting a party. At this point, we cut over to Small and Tender, dressed as a ghost and a wolfman respectively, out trick-or-treating and getting increasingly fed up with the fact that everybody recognizes them. But worst of all, People find their costumes to be <gasps> cute. Did you hear that? Cute. I have to say that I love just how offended Small gets at that. The voice actor must have had a lot of fun recording that line. The way he says that is like the adult just insulted his significant other or something. He's just like, cute, cute. Eventually, the duo find their way to the doorstep of Malicious and Rotten, just as Malicious is finishing up the preparations on her food, having made such tasty morsels as... Have one of my famous party hors d'oeuvres. What are they? What are they? Sardine meringue. Ooh, that's yucky. Oh. Rotten comes up a moment later, and we get to hear one of the better comebacks that I've heard in quite a while. Small and Tender walk off empty-handed and apparently head home at this point, 
As in the next scene, they're both in bed complaining to each other about how they didn't scare anyone all night, and how everybody recognized them in spite of their costumes. Shortly after this, we get introduced to another character, Small Nintendo's babysitter, Bazooey. Uh, I told you, the names get weird in this cartoon. The duo are excited to see him as he comes in with a big book of stories. He asks if they want a spooky Halloween story, and they shoot that down flat, telling him about how they're fed up with Halloween. He then suggests another story, this one about a fairy godmother. The two agree, and he begins to read. At this point, we fade out to the party, which is in full swing at the witch's house, while the guests are still arriving. Miss Witch is watching from the shadows and talking excitedly to herself about all the tricks she's going to pull, like turning the food into different things. I'll turn the pumpkin pie into spider stew. I'll turn the daffy apples into lizards. I'll transform the orders into happy shells. We fade out and back in to see that Bazooey has finished reading the story and that the children are now excited about the idea of a fairy godmother. The two wind up exclaiming how they wish they could be real versions of their costumes from that evening, and this leads to the witch hearing their wishes and deciding to pay them a visit and make their dreams a startling reality. Don't go away, people. I shall return. <laughs> She arrives, and the kids think that she's a fairy godmother. Bazooey, on the other hand, sees her for the witch that she truly is, much to her chagrin. Does this clip remind anyone else of a certain special from 2003? That concept just sounds so familiar for some reason. She explains that she's there because she heard some Halloween wishes and wants to grant them. Bazooey isn't cool with this at first, and has a freakout when the witch does in fact turn Small and Tender into a real ghost and wolfman respectively. She puts his mind at ease though by showing him just how easily she can undo the spell, and once Bazooey's calmed down, she asks him what he'd like to be for Halloween. After giving it some thought, he says that he'd like to be a Frankenstein's monster. She happily obliges him. Then she invites the trio to the party at her place, and the four of them head out. They arrive at the party and sneak their way in undetected. Then the witch begins working her magic on the snacks, turning hors d'oeuvres into spiders and causing nicely to pass out from the shock. This causes some of the guests, who hadn't seen the snacks being transformed, to call out Malicious's cooking for being the culprit. Malicious, obviously, doesn't take lightly to that, and starts trying to defend her cooking when Miss Witch suddenly transforms a garlic candy apple of hers into a lizard right there in her hand. Immediately following this, the group makes their presence known, with Small howling from the hallway and causing the partygoers to become nervous, as they start to believe that the old house may really be haunted. At this point, Small jumps out from the hall, growling and snarling, causing the guests to go running into Tender, who floats in through another doorway and scares the guests even more. This sends them rushing away and finding Bazooey's Frankenstein self as he clomps into view. This, apparently, is the last straw for the partygoers, as they make a break for the front door. Just then, Miss Witch steps into view, and they literally run her over as they flee in terror. After a moment, the witch gets her wits about her, and she pulls herself up off the floor, just as Small, Tender, and Bazooey start to wonder if scaring everybody like that had really been such a good idea after all. The two children lamenting the fact that no one recognized them. Oh, the sweet, sweet, sweet irony in that statement. These two need to make up their minds. Earlier, they were all... Hey, hey, Tender! Nobody will know who we are! Hey, Small! We're gonna scare everybody! And now that they've gotten just what they've wanted, they're all like... Everybody was scared of us! Jeez, nobody knew who we were. I guess there really is no pleasing some people, is there? 
Oh well. Anyway. So the trio start guilt tripping Miss Witch into changing them back to their normal selves. And this is where she finds out that her wand is missing. This causes them to start to panic as they begin to believe that they'll be stuck like this forever! Next we cut to town where the group from the party, which seems to have been the whole town, is gathered and are still freaking out because of the monsters that they had just encountered. They also notice that Small, Tender, and Bazooie are missing, and this causes them to jump to the conclusion that the monsters had gotten them. In the middle of all this chaos, we find out what's become of the witch's wand. As it turns out, while the people were fleeing her home, the wand got caught in Malicious's hair of all places. Rotten discovers this and immediately gets the idea that it may in fact be a real magic wand. And so the two step away from the gathered group to test it out. Of course, they don't know how to use it correctly, and all Malicious is able to conjure up is an old gym sock and a bag of garbage. Back with the gathered group, Goodly blames himself for the disaster and the disappearance of Tender, Small, and Bazooey. Then, thanks to some misinterpreted words from Nicely, he gets the idea to form a mob to hunt down the monsters. As that's happening, we cut back to the witch and the others as they're making their way back into town with her reassuring Bazooey and company that all they need to do is find her wand and she'll be able to change them back to normal. They get back into town just in time to run into the angered mob, and so they're chased right back out of town. Alright editor, let's cue up that Benny Hill music. winds up getting separated, with the witch going one way and the rest running in the other direction. Eventually, they meet up once more with Bazooey, using his monster strength, hauling Miss Witch up into a tree where they had been hiding, and rescuing her from the mob, just in the nick of time. Back in town, Rotten and Malicious are seen still trying to figure out how to make the wand work. This just causes more trouble as the efforts just seem to cause more and more damage to the surrounding area. They wind up melting a street light and deflating a fire hydrant, as well as knocking out the lights for a building nearby. From their new vantage point up in that tree, Witch and company see the bright flashes from her wand being used, and they climb down to find the culprits who are messing with it. Not long after though, the mob spots them again, and they're forced to flee into town. They lose the mob and find Rotten and Malicious still fiddling around with the wand and the mere sight of them sends the two idiots running for their lives. As they do so, they wind up dropping the wand in their terror, allowing Miss Witch to get it back, and she uses it promptly to transform the idiots into a big pair of monsters without their knowledge, just before they dip into a darkened alleyway to hide. At this point, Bazooey starts pleading their case again about being changed back into humans, just as the shouts of the angry mob can be heard approaching. Miss Witch grants his request just before the crowd shows up. Upon hearing them approaching, Rotten and Malicious, still oblivious to the fact of their new monstrous forms, come rushing out of hiding to try and flag them down, only to get themselves caught in the crowd, and forcing Bazooey, Small, and Tender to rush to their rescue. The crowd is obviously confused, and it's up to the witch to set things right. She starts by turning Rotten and Malicious back to normal, then she fixes all the things that they had damaged or destroyed with their mischief, the whole while lamenting how her talents are unappreciated. When she's finished, she gets a round of applause from the crowd, thanks to Nicely having started a slow clap for her. She turns to face them, and things get quiet and awkward for a moment, before Bazooey of all people breaks the silence and gives her just the cue she needs to show off her talents, which she does by turning him back into his Frankenstein form. She then changes Small and Tender back as well. After this, she asks the townspeople what it is that they'd like to be for one scary old Halloween night. 
nicely says she wants to be a vampire, and the witch obliges. Goodly requests to be turned into Attila the Hun, and he gets his form changed as well. At this point, a bunch of people start calling out what they'd like to be. Including one guy who apparently wants to be a... a hockey puck? I want to be a hockey puck! Huh? Miss Witch invites them all back to her place again, promising to grant all their desires before randomly changing her dress into a red one, and transforming her cat back into a cat after having been a bat since the start of the cartoon. We then get to see an outside shot of the mansion as the party goes on inside, and the credits begin to roll as that Witch Magic Halloween song begins to play. Then just after the credits finish rolling, a weird little polka-dotted monster flies into view and meows. She just can't seem to leave that poor cat alone, can she? Well, that's gonna do it for this one, friendos. This is one of those specials I watched as a little one each year when it would air on Disney's Halloween Treat on the Disney Channel. And as such, it holds a certain nostalgic place in my cold little black heart. I really don't hear it get mentioned too often anymore, and I figured I'd try and use this video as a way of giving it some more exposure. I know it's got its flaws, there's animation editors at the wazoo, the voice acting is a bit stiff here and there, but all in all you can tell that the people who worked on this gave it their best shot. And even if the end result isn't perfect, it's still enjoyable, if for nothing else than to use as background noise while you're milling about the house doing things for this Halloween season. With that said, I'm going to wrap things up here by saying a hearty thank you to each and every one of you watching for having come back for another spooky season. I do truly and greatly appreciate it. If this happens to be a first foray into my content, then welcome aboard. With all of that said, I would just like to add this. Viewers beware, and subscribe if you dare. <laughs> Later.